Yeah, traveling by plane's the safest form of transportation, huh? So Red Eye tells the story of a hotel manager who is forced to aid in an assassination attempt while she is traveling by plane. What's up guys and welcome back to the Wes Craven review series. We got two films left, Red Eye and then next is My Soul to Take. Both of which are gonna be very interesting conversations. So Red Eye was actually the last movie on this list that was a first time watch for me. This is a film that for a long time, I didn't even know that Wes Craven directed it. I remember hearing about it when it came out, never really felt like it got a whole lot of buzz. It was just kind of one of those movies that just came and went and sort of forgot about. It wasn't until maybe three or four years ago, maybe even a little bit before that, when I started to be active in the online horror community that I started to see not only the fact that it was a Wes Craven film, which just escaped me, but it was actually a bit of a fan favorite. It was a movie that people really hailed as being underrated and underappreciated. And one of the movies that he did later on in his career that never quite got the credit that it deserved. So I was very interested to finally check out this film for the first time. So starting off with the positives for Red Eye, I actually think this is a really efficient thriller. I think that this is a movie that has no wasted time. It's got all of the fat trimmed off of it. And Wes Craven, when he's at his best, certainly is one of those very efficient storytellers. But this is an under 90 minute film, which more times than not, typically shows that it may not have the best quality to it. But this is one of those examples where this is a story that is best kept quick and it's best kept shorter. There wasn't really any reason to pad this out to an hour and 45 minutes, certainly not two hours, because the pacing of the film really keeps up with the pacing of the plot and adds to the tension of the situation that you're seeing unfold between these two characters. So this is a film that gets going right away. It doesn't really let up and then it ends right when the getting is good. So I really appreciate in a time where we have really long films out there, some of which are amazing, but we tend to have really long films out there that you have a movie like this that you can just throw on and you just have a really good tense time with an 80 minute thriller. I think that both of the leads, Rachel McAdams and Killian Murphy are both awesome in this. They're both actors that I really like, especially Killian Murphy. He's one of those actors that doesn't pop up very often, but when he does, seems like he is just always awesome. And they play really well off of each other. They have really good chemistry to the point where the first act of this film, if you didn't know that it was a thriller or directed by Wes Craven or you didn't have any hints whatsoever about where the story was eventually going to be heading, it actually kind of starts off as a bit of a meet cute. Like you have these two people in line trying to get on this red eye and they just have this instant chemistry to where they're kind of flirting with each other and they're sitting at this bar waiting on the terminal to open up. And it's almost a shame because like they, they really seem like they almost in another life could have been a cool couple. And then all of a sudden in the second act, just on a fucking dime, it just turns into this tense terrorist plot situation. The name's Jackson. Lisa, so what do you do? As fate would have it, my business is all about you. And everything just gets flipped on its script and their performances get turned to where Rachel McAdams suddenly becomes this terrorized victim and Killian Murphy goes from this really nice, likable guy to this very sinister, sadistic and calculated killer. And it's just a really good pairing. When you're gonna have a movie like this that's quick and efficient and just focuses on the electric performances of whoever leads you get, these were damn good picks. You tell the flight attendant and your dad dies. What can I do for you? She's just had a really rough day, a death in the family. I also thought the movie did a really good job at staying grounded and staying believable and never like going over the top, never jumping the shark, never asking too much from its audience as far as suspension of disbelief. I mean, there's things that Rachel McAdams attempts to try to foil this situation that are very realistic and sensible things to do. There's also things that Killian Murphy does in response to this that are very realistic and sensible to do. I mean, you have him and her on this crowded plane and right away you're thinking, how are you going to keep this realistic to where at some point she doesn't just freak the fuck out and just say, this guy's got a bomb or you know, this guy has got a gun or, or anything like that to detain him and it actually makes you buy into that premise and it doesn't make it to the point where you're like, this is kind of bullshit, but I'll go along with it. Do dad a favor and stop gambling with his life. Excuse me, this isn't a motel. 
Moving on to the mixed, I'm kind of torn on the third act of this film. It's fine. It ends the film quickly, ends the film efficiently. It answers all the questions, wraps up all of the story arcs and everything like that. But I do think it's the least interesting act of the film. I think that the, the opening and getting to know these characters and setting up this situation and certainly the chemistry with the two leads is great for that first act. The second act is where all of the tension is and all of the back and forth and the cat and mouse game and a lot of just mental warfare with Killian Murphy's character. And you get into the third act and it becomes all almost quasi slasher action to where there are all put into this final location and you have guy with a knife chasing around the protagonist and you're just seeing them trying to you know shut doors on each other and sneak around and be quiet and while that works while it's fine while it didn't derail the film by any means it just seemed like the mental warfare was so much more engaging and certainly more tense for me than the physical battle that we get in the third act. Moving on to the negatives, there are moments in this film where they place humor that I don't feel like belongs. It kind of feels like Wes Craven after Scream didn't quite know how to make just a straightforward horror thriller or a straightforward dark movie without injecting some humor in there because he just found that perfect mix in the Scream films. And there's just moments in this film where they try to be funny and goofy and kind of almost campy and it just, it doesn't work. It doesn't work because the rest of the film is not that at all. You have a few goofy characters in the beginning in this hotel. You got a few moments where they cut back to the chick who's like working uh, in Rachel McAdams' absence at this hotel and she kind of keeps up that quirky little campy uh, tone about her character. And then certainly it ends on some jokes that kind of pay off stuff that was began in the opening act of the film. but. It just feels like a totally different movie in those moments. There's nothing about this film in the middle or, or any of the scenes regarding Rachel McAdams and Killian Murphy, which is the vast majority of this movie, that have any comedic tone to them whatsoever. So I actually think the movie would have been served better if Wes didn't try to inject some of that humor in there and he just played it straight all the way through. And my final negative is that despite the fact that the performances are great and despite the fact that this is a very quick and efficiently done thriller, I don't think that there's any true moment about it or any aspect of it that just really stands out amongst all the other thrillers that we have had. There's not really anything about this that I'm going to constantly rewatch it for. There's nothing about this that I'm gonna like really hype it up for people and recommend that they check it out. There's a good saying that my buddy Brian Lomax always goes with, which is there's nothing wrong with a three star film. And while I don't necessarily think this is three star, it's a little bit better than that. This is one of those films that just is trying to be exactly what it is, a good, efficient, time at the movies, give you some tension, give you some excitement, and then let you move on with the rest of your day. And while that will be awesome when I'm in the mood for it, this is just not the type of film that I see myself re-watching very often. So all in all, guys, if you are in the mood for a good, quick, efficient thriller, I think this is one of the better examples out there. Certainly if you're a fan of the two leads, this is a showcase of how awesome they both are uh, as actors with their performances. Beyond all of that, I don't think it's a movie you necessarily have to rush out to see or go out and buy right this second. It's just a good time if you find yourself watching it. If you miss this one, you're not exactly missing like this earth shattering film in his filmography. So if you wanna check out one of Wes Craven's lesser known works, definitely give Red Eye a shot. Just walk in knowing that this is going to be exactly what it is advertised as. Check it out online and stream it. So what do you guys think of Red Eye? Is this one of your favorite Wes Craven films? Did you even know it was a Wes Craven film? Did you see it in theaters? Have you watched it recently? Let me know all of your thoughts down below on Red Eye and we will talk about it. Please like and share this video. Hit that subscribe button if you are a fan of Wes Craven. I got one more film, My Soul to Take, to review and then I'm gonna be ranking all 20 or so films that I have reviewed and all of his theatrically released directed films. So if you're a fan, don't miss any of that and check out all those older reviews as well. I put the playlist up here at some point in this video. Thank you guys for watching as always and remember, opinions are like assholes, but that doesn't mean that you have to be.